All right. So welcome everyone to the June edition of Loopback Maintenance Call. We we have some big news today. So Dana or Remini, you want to take it? Make the announcement. Yeah, I think you you you're referring to the um the loopback okay. joins the open js foundation right, right. right. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah I think... that's all news yeah so so um it was announced in last week um last wednesday's G open js world uh during the keynote uh presentation and that uh, look back joins uh, open source uh, open js foundation as the as the incubation projects um so i think you probably see some some blog posts and tweets about it too um so i think like um as the next step then like the the incubation project means like we uh, uh we, we joined the open js foundation and then the next step is there's some onboarding work that needs to be done and then after that uh, all satisfied then then we'll move to the graduate project i think a number of uh, the projects uh are in the graduate project and in also made in the announcement as well um yep so i think that's the the the, the um the news that we uh that we have so we're going to have a follow-up meeting with uh, OpenJS Foundation to understand the logistics, like uh, how we kick off the process, start to move the you know repositories around, and uh, maybe set up the uh, website and some other things, right? Yeah, um, I, I thought it was some time this week, but I didn't see any um, meeting invite. I can um, I can follow up to see. Okay. All right. So once we have that information, we are probably invite, um, you know, all the TSC members, uh, if you are interested, right? Uh, um, there is a, um, a checklist onboarding checklist. Um, I can find out and share with you all. Uh, but I think it will be better. That's like, we have that meeting and so that's, um, Jory can can sort of go through it with us. Find that out too at the same time. So basically at this point we're just waiting uh for the next steps uh for the incubation process, right? Yeah. Mm. Excellent. So we continue to, you know improve the project uh, during this period. And whenever we figure out the logistics steps to move things around, we'll do that. Okay. So do you expect changes to the to the GitHub repositories in terms of uh, transformation, uh, uh, privileges or location, something like that? Or I believe it, so. Right? I think Dana already create the loopback IO organization. Mm -hmm. And most likely we are gonna move some more repos there. And the GitHub actually can keep the redirection uh if the old repo are not being taken by something else. Um mm -hmm. and uh, I think as part of that process we'll probably update some of the for example the copyright statement and some other things uh we, we have to figure out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so uh, we also had a like uh, innovation day for a UK insurance company. So Diana, myself, and Rifa were presenting. Uh, look back to. Uh, what's the name of the company, Dana? Uh, Covea. Okay. Yeah. So, so they invite us to give a talk. Um, uh, so the company is adopting Nubag for their kind of platform and API solution. 
so mm -hmm. Diana present the high level uh, overview or look back and the refund get a uh, very uh, you know comprehensive walkthrough of the uh, Prisma extension and the share his experience in building extensions for loopback and how to extend the framework. So I gave a, a quick talk about how to utilize the loopback core foundation to build, you know, large scale Node.js project. Um, kind of giving a few different perspectives, like how you use mono repo, how you use TypeScript, then how you use a, a few like a proven patterns, like you know, demand mm -hmm. injection as well as uh, extension point slash extension for uh, complex, you know, applications or, or frameworks. Um, so I believe they're going to share the video uh, with us, then we can share with the community. Excellent. I think that was a, a good talk and like we also cover like what is the yeah, extending loop back and I think they are they're trying to 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 investigate that too. Um so in the chat I shared the link for the Open GS Foundation onboarding chat list. Mm -hmm. Um so I think those are the things that you sort of uh some of them are sort of in a good shape, like for example for CLI, DCO thing, and then um, for the code of conduct, I think we should be good there. Um, yeah, so there, there, there are a list of things that we'll probably need to do. Okay, post-production, that's going to be the, the reported checklist. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to look at the checklist and uh, try to figure out what are the action items. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, the other thing that I would like to bring up is um, currently we're using a VM uh, for the dash db and also db2 uh, connector in CI. And um, that VM, we need to migrate to a, another OS because we're using an infrastructure. And so they force us to, they, they shut it down and then we have to migrate to a new OS. So I'm thinking like, instead of putting effort there, so maybe we should like, um, to see if we can use the GitHub action instead. Um, um, that might be something that we to look into uh, maybe in the late later. That's for the dash TV, you said? Yeah, dash TV and uh, um, DB2 connector. Uh, okay. I think currently we don't have any, um, let's see, we don't have any PR ads. Um, so. Not be too bad. Uh, I saw there's one PR in the DB2 connector. But I think the the two connectors is pretty stable, and there's um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I remember that. Uh, at some point, it was it was actually brought to the table uh, the fact to to consolidate all the connectors uh, into one big mono repo or something, or to bring in under the loopback uh, next main repo. Have you considered something like that? Yeah. So I think that should happen if we ever will develop a so-called connect next, meaning. We really rewrite the juggler with uh, TypeScript and uh, define the formal uh, contract for connected to implement in TypeScript. So if we kick off that process, then we probably can do that. Otherwise, it's not very useful. Mm 
Yeah, and what's interesting so is now we have, yeah, I think what's interesting is now Nubank is in a mode to support many different kind of OIMs. So I'm not sure if the community ever will have that uh, motivation to refine the juggler framework in reality. Because that's going to be a huge take. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, that means, uh, for example, the new ORM integrations, um, uh, if some of them actually touches uh, the repository uh, integration, for example, that will be a plus, right? Because that yeah. means that you can, in reality, move away juggler any time or just yeah, like yeah. also in your project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the beauty of uh, have a universal JSON based uh, crawl operations is helpful. Uh, but uh, that's really the the common denominators uh, a lot of database can support. Uh, I think that can cover probably 60, 70% 60, of the use cases, but for the rest, um, we might have to just fall back to the native support. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's a little like uh, Prisma, right? So Prisma has a similar kind of uh, idea for all the crawl operations. I think they were maybe somehow inspired by us as well, because at some point they want to have an integration with us. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so in, in a way, um, they decided to use uh, a GraphQL schema uh, together with some annotations in the schema to describe the data model and then generate the client code representing the data access patterns. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we similar. are actively working on the Prisma integration. So hopefully that could be a, a, a great feature. Um, and that through the uh, remove some of the pressure we have on the Jocular side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this integration that Rifa is is working um, actually is 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 integrating uh, even at the repository level to, to replace eventually. I want that uh, Rifa speak. Uh, yeah, Rifa, we cannot hear you actually. Yeah, I, actually we cannot see you Rifa. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's muted something. Okay, he will rejoin. And actually, in my project, I use uh, Prisma 2 by directly um, inject the Prisma client code into my controller. Yeah. I, actually, I didn't hear you initially, but only said, only hear controller, but that was Rifa, right? Yeah, that was me, sorry. Uh, I, I, oh, I okay, I thought they... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, switch Sorry, to my... Oh, sorry? So I, we can hear you now, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, actually I was curious, right? Uh for the juggler, because I understand uh, I think it's generally agreed upon that we want to try to diversify our ORM options so like type ORM and Prisma and you know, lighten the load from us having to maintain and continue to upgrade juggler. Though I'm wondering if uh, we can still like move it into the mono repo so that it can still like benefit from things like learner for unified release and also for like commit management and workflows. Or is there like some deeper integration that we need to consider? Yeah, so basically the two things, right? One is how we manage the intro dependencies um, and for all the connectors. Um, they don't have 
dependencies to each other, but they mostly have dependencies on the juggler. Okay. So, uh, yes, if we have a mono repo that will bring some value and the simplicity. Uh, but on the other side, if we are not kicking off the next version of Juggler and we write the Juggler in type square and well define the contract in interfaces so that different connectors can implement this similar behaviors and also add their own behaviors on top of that. Uh, I think the most value for a mono repo will come in in that phase. Uh, but I'm not sure if that phase will ever happen because now it's a fully community driven project. And then now we have other choices. Like say, hey, <clears throat> we can fully integrate with a type OM. We could uh, now have the integration with a Prisma. Uh, so uh, like maybe we don't necessarily have to continue to improve the jugglers and uh, the Lexi connectors, uh, or we can repurpose some of the connectors uh, for a new OIM. Okay. Um, then that story could be very different. Okay. I think yeah. that's about right. Like, personally speaking, if I had bandwidth, I will probably, you know, rewrite the juggler in, in TypeScript and well define the different uh, category of uh, capabilities as interfaces. Then we can rewrite the connectors to implement a uh, different set of features. Uh, then when you talk to the different connector using the universal uh, crawl API uh, request, um, we figure out for any connector um, if they support that feature or not, or they have additional features beyond the common features that you know the juggler supports. So you can basically opt into later features from MongoDB. You can use the same crawl APIs to talk to different databases without changing the client code. So I think that would be a, a good win. Uh, like even for Prisma, uh, yeah, if we can do that, uh, Prisma actually has a native command as well uh, for any feature that don't support in uh, as part of the ORM. Yeah. Definitely, I I agree with you because um, when when I I think for example that. Um, the 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 for example like uh, the extension point extension model right pattern similar to that uh, for the juggler, and in in that case we really have a universal bridge and if you come with Prisma you come with other just uh, a plugin, and even the legacy connectors for the people that have already invested for example if they don't want to move away because they are happy they can just remain that that architecture is will be very awesome flexible definitely. Yeah. And if we, you know, rewrite the thing in type square and then leverage the dependency injection and the extension point extension pattern also together with the uh, interception pattern, we can do a lot of interesting things there. First of all, like uh, with dependency injection, uh, we can propagate the request context all the way to the database layer. Um, like we can also, you know, um, leverage the extension pattern to uh, figure out the different kind of connected capabilities. Um, then when we talk to the database, we can also inject some code in between so that you can do, you know, database verification, transformation, things like that for the OMOM request to your uh, database backend. Right. So if we have the bandwidth to do that, I think it's going to be great. And I think uh, on the OpenJS Foundation, we might have to look at um, the decomposition of the loopback framework, uh, at least from the logical point of view. Right? So I think um, okay. I, I'm finding some new interest from um, new contributors really try to refine our uh, core foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, like, uh, uh, we will build new extensions to different, uh, you know, backend technologies, and then 
uh, we will continue to evolve the RAS API experience. And people also asking for gRPC in some form of APIs like GraphQL. So we also had a call with another open source uh, GraphQL project. So they're kind of working on a PR that really uh, make the GraphQL pipeline a first class citizen of loopback. So that because today we pretty much just uh, slot in the GraphQL as a RAS um, uh, pipeline as a special middleware that you know, reroute the traffic to, to GraphQL. So that project actually has a, a, a plugin infrastructure that allows you to do a lot of things uh, before hitting the real GraphQL implementation. So they're kind of working on a PR, trying to integrate with a type GraphQL, which we have an extension for. So if that happens, then we can really promote GraphQL as a first class server, uh, in addition to REST server. And of course, similar things for for gRPC, right? So that's uh, oh well. Uh, so basically, we have the core foundation, and on top of the core foundation, we have different kind of, you know, uh, protocol support for incoming requests. Uh, then, if we have the bandwidth to refine the database uh, integration, uh, to have uh, next generation of Juggler, uh, that's even better. Uh, but we just have to look at these um, uh, different perspectives of the whole framework and uh, probably um, drive that based on the command, uh, the, the, the need from the community yeah. and the, the amount of contribution from the community. Yes. Okay, so I would like to add that uh, uh, there is already a module for enabling uh, type ORM support in loopback. Uh, yes. Are yes. you and Rifa, are you aware about that? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, aware. Uh, Yep, yep. So it, it shows that uh, we can uh, definitely uh, further work on that module and uh, uh, pro uh, provide uh, complete support for type ORM with uh, loopback or any other uh, library like uh, Prisma or whatever you want. Yeah, I think it kind of uh, boils down to another question because, of course, we can integrate with different ORMs uh, using their native capability. As the extension to do back, right? Then whoever uses that ORM, they have to opt in all the contracts uh, imposed by that ORM. So that's one, right? And the second one is, do we want to do the next level abstraction? Like say, uh, for the crawl operations, we also have a JSON structure uh, for different operations, and we also have a query language to define the different criteria for search, for inclusion, for Projection, right? Um, so all these uh, different ORMs has similar capabilities, but not in a unified way, right? So I think the question is, do we want to have that translation layer that takes the universal request and uh, you know transform them into different ORM so that the ORM take care of the real implementation, but uh, still own the, the universal uh, request and response. Yeah, so yeah. definitely, uh, as I mentioned before, that would be great. And I think, uh, for example, that um, if we go into the uh, next generation of the uh, Jogler Universal Adapter, for example, uh, that can leverage whatever we do have today with the repository model and everything, and it can be an abstracted layer so that you can pl uh, plug in, for example, type RM, uh, Prisma, and everything in 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 behind the scenes. I think that that would be great. Of course, it requires a lot of bandwidth, and but uh, you don't have isol isolated integrations, right? You really plug in uh, the model that will be added uh, benefits for performance and probably bringing bringing new features. But it's still adhere to the universal uh, Jogler adapter. Yeah, especially for like uh, not so savvy API uh, developers, because we we have a universal way, and then we can actually generate the code uh, by convention. Right? So they get the consistent set of REST APIs talking to uh, different kind of databases. I think that's a that's a benefit to have a universal Jogler layer. Uh, mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like some developers do have strong opinions on different ORMs, 
that like one flavor or the, the other ones. So we will keep that door open as well. So as long as they can take care of that by themselves. Um, so they can just basically build their own controllers and uh, maybe their, their template for the controllers to leverage that data access patterns talking to uh, uh, their um, a preferred OM. That's great too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Rifa, what uh, the Prisma integration that you're working on um, is uh, similar to the type or REM type of integration, or what are your thoughts about it in, in terms of the integration with whatever we have right now with the right. repositories? So, uh, I uh, let's see. Um, so, for the Prisma integration, uh, because I am not as familiar with type ORM in comparison to Prisma. Uh, so I'm not uh, too sure, like, uh, in the bigger scheme of things, how the integration style was for that. Uh, but for the Prisma integration, what what we're trying to do, or at least what I'm trying to do, is um, kind of, like, allow people to just, like, drop in their existing Prisma uh, implementation if they want to. So, like, Okay, so say like you have an existing project and you want to import it into uh, Lubeck for with all of your existing Prisma clients and so on. Uh, you can do that with the current Prisma integration, but then at the same time, it also adds some like additional uh, nice to have things on top of it. So for example, the Prisma client and the Prisma models will get automatically uh, bound to con to the dependency injection context, and also you can actually add Prisma middleware into uh by, by a dependency injection and uh, another thing that uh, we're, we're also looking at is uh supporting things like providers in prisma so prisma middleware is kind of like set it and forget it similar to express js where once you initialize once you uh, added the middleware you can't really do anything with it after the fact uh so with this kind of like provider in integration with loopback providers we're actually providing the capabilities for the loopback for developers to um uh you know dynamically uh construct and build their uh, middleware so uh yeah we were kind of like making it simple for people to get started with but then we're also adding uh additional uh enhancement capabilities to kind of like bridge the loopback for concepts into uh the prisma integration uh as of right now we uh, I, do, I think it's kind of out of scope, but it's part worth considering to an extent, like uh, supporting um, a generation of like uh, or like integration with like loopback for models, so that so that uh, we can leverage a unified model system. Like you, you share this model across uh, the entire application, but I think for the first like MVP of the product, we, we're just sticking to. Um, really just uh, tying it in with the dependency injection. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, I have to drop to join another meeting, but can I meet you again and a great chatting. Thanks, Raymond. Okay, Raymond. Take care. Bye. Take care. Oh, yeah. Continue. Uh, I mean, that's uh, uh, pretty much the gist of the Prisma integration. If if you want, you can actually uh, take a look at the uh, readme on the pull request itself and uh, see like what's the scope of the integration. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much like what we're trying to do. Right? Like, okay, an existing user can like drop in their Prisma into Loopback for pretty easy. But then, like, if you want to enhance it, look back for concept, you can do that as well. Because uh, I think because the thing about Prisma is that it's rather unique in the sense that the, the, the code is generated on the fly from, like, the Prisma's own custom data modeling language and then it generates TypeScript files for you. So I think it makes it a unique case uh, compared to type ORM, which has the more um, traditional TypeScript approach. Okay. Uh, I I never seen type ORM integration uh, 
Japa, can you refresh me uh, a little bit about the type of RAM integration? If it actually uh, leverages the model that we create at Loop Backward, at, le at least, for example? Uh, it's <clears throat> it's not, uh, 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 you, you cannot drop in a Loop Back 4 model uh, in, in uh, I mean, uh, you cannot directly use the Loop Back mo uh, 4 model definition with type of RAM. Uh, they are slightly different, but uh, not uh, drastically different. But you have to do some work. It's, I think it's similar to like our GraphQL implementation. We have like add additional stuff onto the class, right? Mm -hmm. Model. Yeah. So uh, yeah, right. So uh, uh, in the current implementation, uh, we have maintained uh, type ORMs. Uh, their they their uh, keywords, so we we are not replacing them with uh, the loop back way of doing that. So even the API mm -hmm. is uh, uh, the type ORM API. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I never work. I, 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 to be honest with you, for example, the applications that we have on production right now uses Chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, one of the banks actually connects to DB2, uh, so we use the, the connector DB2. Mm -hmm. And so far, so good. I mean, we haven't had any, any problems to, to use any other type of, of integrations. Um, but that, that uh, I take a look at, at the type of RM and and more precisely whatever Rifa is is working, just to see the because for example like uh, what if I am a user and and wants to use for example let's say type of RM right mm. and I think that uh, might be good for example if I am not interested in any in any model type integration that as we currently have but use type RM in full, for example, uh, the CLI actually can give me uh, some options, for example, to generate the type of RMs as type of RM requires, for example. Uh, and right, right. The whole infrastructure at Lumbach should actually be, be digesting this new structure uh, more or less, right? I'm thinking about from the developer's perspective. Yes, yes, yes. Of, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be ideal. It, it requires, uh, I think, a good amount of work. Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. generally the ORM integrations we're working on like layers. So like we have the first layer of integration, which is just dropping in the, uh, dropping it into Loopback Fall, which we know a special integration beyond that, and then we have like the next layers on top of it. So like Loopback Fall modules. And then filter generation, etc. Right. But at, at this moment, the type ORM integration doesn't have that yet. Yeah. Rifa, you, you mentioned, for example, that Prisma um, uh, generates uh, uh, models on the fly, for example, without a strong type, like uh, the type ORM, for example. How does that be, how does it behaves or behave in the in the VS Code editor, for example, where we really need to to have all these um, check-ins from the yeah, developer so, perspective, right? Yeah, uh, so uh, usually when you use an ORM like juggler type or you're creating the models and data sources as in TypeScript. But with Prisma, mm -hmm. you have the CLI command called Prisma generate, which takes in like the custom uh, data modeling language and then generates a, a custom TypeScript file specifically for your project into the node modules. So, uh, so to use it, you can just import the Prisma client. And then, but when you import that, it's actually different for every project because it's generated on the fly. There isn't like the same set of like uh, generic types as you would see in mm -hmm. other. So uh, when you import it, it's, yeah, uh, yeah okay. you use TypeScript features. Like for and for example, in VS Code, uh, let's say for example, you have uh, three models uh, with different uh, properties. For example, and and how do you 
how do you see it in VS Code Editor, for example? Uh, do you have this IntelliSense that the properties come up even if they are generated or is pre-generated? Uh, so like, when you import the Prisma, so the models are actually stored in the Prisma client. So when you create, when you import and create a new Prisma client instance, uh, there will be a class member with the name of that model. So for example, if I have a model of the user, then I can do Prisma client dot user, and then I have access to the model functions. Uh, this is slightly, this is kind of a, I think uh, a bit of a different approach to how Lubeck for that. Uh, with Lubeck for you have the concept okay. of repositories, but over here in Prisma, it's okay. kind of like merged together in models. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah, so I think one uh, unique case in the developer experience is that every time you change your uh, mod, you, you change your models in Prisma, you have to run the generate command every time. So, it, so that it can create the JavaScript files internally. Mm. Yeah, and 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 the connectors are. Are basically contributed by the community, or like for example, the Postgre, MySQL. Does it have DB2 also um, connected? Uh, I don't think so. For Prisma, their official support list is uh, a lot tighter compared to a uh, Juggler. Uh, right now, I believe they support MySQL, Postgres, and uh, uh, MS SQL, MongoDB, and SQL Lite. But uh, no, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the thing that I like to do back for Prisma's APIs are kind of more um more close, so you don't have like full access to all of the API features. Everything is hidden mm -hmm. underneath the generator. Okay. Yeah, so it lacks support for enterprise databases like Oracle, yeah. DB2, and so on, right? Uh, I, yeah, it doesn't uh, really have that uh, support built in. Uh, actually, I'm curious, uh, maybe Diana could, or, uh, or someone could actually uh, um, be, may be knowledgeable in this area. Because I've been in digging through the juggler, um, juggler code base a bit, I wanted to understand more. Uh, my understanding is that it actually has like functions to um, do like manual migration, uh, auto, mm -hmm. auto, like discover foreign keys. So, mm -hmm. was, it, was, was it ever used in Lubeck 4 or, or was it the Lubeck framework in general or was it just more from the fork of Juggling? Mm -hmm. Because I, I noticed that it doesn't seem like the connectors use the these functions or implement them. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a, a close look at at your work on that. And Diana, where would you are launching new Lubeck next version today? Yes. Sorry, I think my connection is not good. I think you're breaking up. Uh, oh. And I think I missed part of the first uh, thing. So yeah, so I'm planning to um, publish today after this meeting, if everything goes okay. well. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Actually, uh, um, speaking of, up, yep. Uh, I missed a comment about the 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 migration and discovery. Um, what, what was your comment? Oh yeah, because uh, I wasn't here for when I wasn't here pre v four of Lubeck. Uh, so what I noticed is that the juggler uh, Lubeck juggler actually supports connectors uh, with certain functions for like manual migration, like discovering foreign keys and whatnot. But it doesn't seem like most of the connectors ever implement them. So I'm wondering, is that like an artifact from like the original? Uh, packet juggling DB. I'm not sure. Um, I think Raymond would know the answer. 
Yeah, I think not all the all the connector has. Um, I think Postgres has it. So that's the only thing that I try. Uh, MySQL might have it too, but I'm not too sure. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to do a bit more digging into the juggler DB. It's a quite quite a lot of code mm -hmm. to look through. Actually, on the topic of uh, re of releasing packages, uh, I, I believe the, there was a PR created to like automate releasing new versions. Though there were some concerns, like issues running the learner command, were uh, were they ever resolved? Yeah, I was wondering about that PR too. Um, we can always give it a try. If those are good, um, but I think we need Francisco, Francisco's PR, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh -huh. um, in order for it to work, we need to possibly have, uh, either Raymond or I, uh, to get the, the API keys, right? Or some deploy key or something. I can't remember the exact term. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we will we'll need the put the API key into GitHub Actions. Okay, okay, yeah, because I remember um, we have similar setup, not really the release, uh, but for the loopback IO repo, um, I think the place to get it is to okay. just set it is on the deploy keys in the settings. Um, I can take a look and can see, give it a try. Does it, does it mention, I forgot the details of the PR already. Um, does it have say a time, like a, we release periodically, like say first, uh, first day of the month or like the 15th of the month or something like that i i need to check also in a while yeah yeah i know um well, we can yeah we can take that offline and maybe review the pr again okay cool um yeah the only thing that i'm not sure is i remember one of my comment is um is the the comment is uh the command is interactive so like after you do the npm run release or <coughs> push, um then it will do the npm test and then it will ask you here's the 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 future version that is gonna create a you good with that um i think those we need to have an input um, so I'm not sure if the PR, I, I'm not sure how exactly it will run if it is in a GitHub action. Um, right. But other than that, I think we can, if everyone is good with that, I think we can, I can try to set up the deploy keys and um, give it a try. Yeah, I mean, if, if we, uh, if we, need, we can still probably make it a manually run task. So like, uh, if you want to do, you can still do manual releases, but then. So that we can like monitor if wrong, uh, then we we'll, we can fix it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. If you find a PR, do you mind just share it? Oh, okay. Uh, and, I, can, I can find it too. Okay. Uh, sorry. And I, I thought uh, you already have it. Uh, <laughs> I am on my phone, so I can't really copy and paste, but the pull request number is 7344. Okay. So, yeah, so currently, um, the setup right now is one job that I think occurs every, every week. If I'm not mistaken. Um, looking at the PR, uh, 
I'm not sure that it would just work because uh, it, uh, even I could not manually publish it uh, sitting in front of the terminal like the last time I tried. Yeah, so, so I, I, I'm not with publishing with Learner, so I, I don't know if there's anything wrong with this or mm -hmm. what are like, uh, potential pitfalls for publishing. Yeah, I, if, if it works, it would be, it would be great. It would be much quicker. Yeah. Efficient. Um, in the documentation, I think the PR mentioned is every 14 days or 15 days. But I don't see that. That's yeah, first. Okay. Uh, the first or, or, or the 15 of each month, it says, but. The, the, Yeah. But it can be run manually also. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, think look a bit deeper to this uh, offline. I just want to like surface it, it doesn't go stale. Mm -hmm. I think. Also, some other points is that uh, I understand that loopback is kind of like a stationary period because previously it was uh, mostly driven by IBM. Now it's more of the configuration model. Uh, so, do you think uh, we should having an uh, informal thoughts? Because uh, right now it doesn't seem like we have a consolidated place for like roadmaps or what we're working on. I think we can yeah, we can... I, I, I think, for example, I... sorry. Yeah, I think that the, the major concerns uh, is is basically uh, uh, the timeouts, the failure, the, the failover, more or less uh, how it behaves, right? Because at some point, uh, even for example, if it can retry automatically, because as you mentioned, Diana, uh, it 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 usually fails, right? The timeout. So, in in those cases, perhaps we could like consider a Slack integration that send us an alert to panels that will be notified if it fails. No. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, for example, what if what if you want to suspend it? For example, let's say that, uh, that we want a specific feature to not land today, but uh, maybe to wait two days for that feature that we really need to retest or something more or less, right? So it can be like uh, automated, but then you can actually suspend it to modify it. I think we can we can dig into this some more. Yeah, actually, the if you go under actions and then you select the workflow, and then there are three dots, there will be a disable workflow button. Oh, so you can disable. Okay. Yeah, so we we should be able to uh, disable it. Gets fine. Also, uh, just throwing it in here, I actually created a Google Calendar that perhaps we could try out so that we could uh, have consolidated um, view of all the relating to the loopback framework. If if you want, you can drop your emails in the Slack channel uh, in the thread, and then we can add, could give the edit permission. Uh, right here in the chat? Uh, if you want to drop it in the chat, let's find also, or you can also drop it in the the thread in Slack also. Oh, I'll okay. just yeah, I'll just add everyone as a as a editor for the character. Uh, 
Okay. So okay. looking into this. <clears throat> this one, yep. I think, I think um, the the purpose you well the the objective that you're looking at the calendar is different from from mine. I think you want oh. to like, because of the time zone is very like it could be very messed up, right? And um, and um, I usually is not very good at time zones. <laughs> um, and yeah. um, but like for me, so for example, if like say after. Um, we meet with the open GS okay. foundation uh, folks, then um, there might be some more work that needs to be done. And then we need like additional uh, meetings besides this one, then, then how can we solicit uh, a good time slot for everyone? Um, yeah. so. so I believe the Google Agenda can send event, send invites and you can uh, act you can, like accept or you can reject or suggest a new schedule. The only requirement though is that you have a Google account. Oh. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if, if 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 everyone's okay with that or um if there's another solution. I think we can try the Google Calendar. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then uh, I'll, if, I mean, we can just trial it out. If it doesn't work out, then you can replace it with something else. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after this, after this call, I'll add everyone uh, into the calendar. Uh, Diana, I have one question uh, uh, for the for the documentation side. Uh, there is a um, there is a, a, a an empty space there in documentation where it says uh, how we do communicate with others. I don't recall right now if it was in the tutorial or getting started. What section? Uh, do you remember that part? Order for the migration? Uh, for communicating external uh, data sources, like using the service proxy REST, uh, like for example, REST data sources, something like that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where was that? Communicating external data sources. Is it this one? No, I, I just two two two. Mm, I don't recall. Mm, I post it right now. Maybe I can ping you in Slack flow so that you can direct me where we can you know, place information. Uh, I think it's a tutorial, but I'm not sure. But I would try to find it. I just lost it right now. But it was empty when you click on that. Uh, whole loop back for communicates with external resources. Um, it was kind of like, a, you know, content to come, something like that. But oh, I see. I would like to place. Uh, did you, if you find did you it, look? then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Don't worry. I will. I will put it in the in the Slack uh, channel. Maybe you okay. can. I think there uh, was. Yeah, I think there was some rework in that area um, by Mo some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so may, yeah. yeah, if you find yeah. it then. Yeah, we will. Uh, because that would be great uh, to actually play some content there to, uh, so that uh, people can, can understand, for example, the, ser the service proxy uh, integration. I think. Uh, that probably there is a lack of understanding what are the capabilities of, of what we can do with that, especially for microservice communication or integration with other APIs. But uh, basically microservice communication, I think that we can place there uh, a small tutorial on, on, on two services communicated to each other so that people can, can, grab, can grab it more easily, right? So I, I will try to contribute to that, but then first we have to Locate the link. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you have something else, Japa? 
I guess uh, that's it from my side. All right. Excellent. Uh, the PR the PR for uh, MongoDB connector uh, for transaction support uh, is I think the, for the basic transaction support is very good. Uh, so how do you release the connectors? Uh, we have to wait until the the next release of Loopback Next. Uh, no, it's it is separate. It is separate. Ah, it's a separate. Ah, yeah, great, yeah. excellent. Yeah, I think that that might be something that we probably need to discuss. Um, and because right now, uh, me and Yapa Raymond has um has the published right. So um, mm -hmm. so do we want to put it for the TSC has the published right, or how do we do with it? And um, and when we when I was talking to Joe Sappy, who's part of the GS Foundation, um, he said in some projects they have a sort of like a, a release team, so they have the published mm. right to npm JS, and but I don't know if we want to like separate out or just have yeah. like yeah, so maybe we can discuss that, discuss that next time too. All right, excellent. Okay, you, for me you. it's fine. Anything else, anyone? Uh, so actually, actually, I think uh, maybe just a quick one on, because uh, I know previously back when uh, the loopback framework was kind of like spearheaded by IBM, well, maintained as well from IBM, um, there was like, uh, I think there was um, a board, like a board, a Zen hub board, showing like what is being worked on and then like what stage it is that. Mm. So, I mean, so now that uh, Loopback is kind of transitioned to a more distributed contribution model, uh, are we, we we considering like re the um, like a like a weak roadmap to give like um, users an idea of what we are focusing on? I think it de that it depends. Um... Whether because I know we are not working as full time, right? And so, like, yeah. um, uh, do we want to put it in a way that this is happening, like this is something in works and like among the maintainers and also maybe some other people in in some other contributors as well, um, or we want to say like sort of a roadmap that oh we want to do something and then say if anyone interested then they can like work together that kind of thing um so yeah i, I think maybe one of the issues with the github issue tracker right now is that you don't know what stage the issue is at so is it are we still discussing an architectural decision or we just haven't implemented it yet so, so it's kind of we don't like have that clear boundary uh, in like the 400 issues that we have right now. Uh -huh. So I have a question. Uh, is Sana, uh free for uh, open source or we need, still need to pay? Uh, I mean, I believe uh, Loopback Framework ha has been using it back when, back, uh, back when it was an uh, IBM uh, oriented project. So. Yes. <laughs> Because we were paying I... uh like the license every year, so oh, okay yeah 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 so so that's why I'm thinking like if we don't so l let me find out yeah so um yeah because see if sign up is free if it is for everyone because I need to assign license to individuals um so seems to be free for open source for like public repositories. Okay, so maybe we can do that or um, there's there was something else that we were looking into at some point is the, the GitHub projects. Um, so it's, the good thing is because it's part of GitHub, right? So you don't need extra sign up for to, to, to do that. Um, we can do that too or um, looking to Trello at some point 
but it, it seems to be a, a different account and different setup. So, so, so may, it may not be that favorable and we, if everything we can do it within GitHub, um, so something that we can look to do. Okay. Um, I I can uh, I can take a look at it and um, if I find it, I can back this meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Are we done? So, All right. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, see you again next month. Bye. -bye. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. -bye. Yeah.